Hello, everybody. It's Stephen and Walter here with another episode of So Chatty, episode 82 for November the 18th, 2022. Hope everybody had a good week. Hope you were creative. And so before we get into the main event, we have some things to show you. And I'll start with what I had to show you because my things are pretty. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, whatever. So here it is. Been working on this since March. This is a block of the month uh, called uh, Lakeside. It's uh, done with Donna at Ultimate Sewing as a Zoom class. Uh, the hostess with the mostest, as you know, you've heard me talk about Donna before. And Donna always picks quilts that she likes to call a challenge. I like to call them the quilts from hell. But I still take the classes because I usually learn quite a bit. And I learned quite a bit on this quilt. This was a tricky one to get all those pieces together. But I'm really happy with it. Now, it's not quilted yet. That's a project coming up. Maybe it started on this weekend. I got Lucy all cleaned up and ready to go. Strap it on there. Walter has been desperately studying it, looking for a mistake. He will not find any because I caught them and took them out and put them back put them back the right way uh, with it. So I know there aren't any. He studies it all the time, though. Look at him. Right now, he's looking at pictures. Mm -hmm. Trying to put that there. What? Which one? Look on the other side. It's mirror image. Yeah, it doesn't look the same. It does. Just the way the picture's taken. Okay, fine. One of these doesn't belong. No, it works fine. It's working out. It's good. It's fine. There's no mistakes. I strongly suggest you go with that. And so I've been busy making Christmas bags. So I have made 12 of them. They're not up to Walter's standard. I call these utility Christmas uh, totes. Walter makes couture. And you're going to see what he's been working well i on haven't too. started making the bags i've just been embroidering right now so. yeah he's been embroidering his little brains out as you'll see momentarily and i'm still working on stephanie stitches mosaic star quilt which is going to be great i thought i had all the blocks done i read the pattern i thought i understood what it said and i thought it said you needed 15 blocks so i have 15 blocks then i looked at the pattern again no, I need double that number. I need 30 blocks. So I got to make another 15 blocks, which they're not difficult to do or anything like that. It was just, you know, I was kind of hoping to get this done a little sooner. But because Stephanie wants me to come on her show and, and show it and talk about it. And I told her, oh, yeah, well, I'll probably have it done in about two weeks. I don't think that's going to happen now. I don't think this one's going to get done until after Christmas. But anyways, it's OK. So that takes me to what walter's been working on and as you know we said he's been working on his christmas bags well here's some of his embroidery okay, okay this is a poinsettia so it'll be on one side of the bag and then on the opposite side of that same bag will be this design which oh. is ornaments oh aren't you tricky you've got might have a design on both sides of the same one oh. and then another it. bag i have uh this one is one side Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the other side That's will be this one that's pretty very pretty and then i don't have the other i have only one side made for this bag but i'm good at work well this is the side. one that took you forever yeah this one it? took a long time to 28 to color changes it's actually really nice yeah but, it is a very nice one but uh yeah oh, i really like that one yeah very nice so pretty so um how many bags you making i don't know um i want to make a couple for other people like i mean mm -hmm. i was hoping i'd get a couple done this week so that i could take them to my lunch on thursday oh yeah you have a luncheon on thursday i forgot about that yeah but so i gotta get going at that still got any like, bags for the neighbors yeah i know and i don't know how many she wanted well, I don't know. She's getting what I'm going to give her. So. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, I make utility bags. Walter makes designer. And he's very proud of that fact as well. So, we did have a sew day last week at the club. Um, I got to go this time. And I got quite a bit done. Uh, I've started another quilt. Actually, it's a quilt that I had pieces all cut up for for last March's retreat that we went to, and I never got to it. So um, I thought that was a good one to take. I could have taken uh, Stephanie's uh, Mosaic Stars, but 
at that point I thought, well, I kind of need a design wall with me too, because I want to put them right order. Not thinking that I still have 15 more blocks to go. <laughs> so, but anyways, that was there weren't a lot of us. There were what four people, five, uh, counting Brandon. No, I like one point six because that other guy came four in working five. on his yeah, game. six altogether. Yeah, yeah, it's at a gay club. Uh, so you don't know what you get. <laughs> here and I go. So there was like the ones from Walter's class, uh, some of them, a couple of them. There was uh, a lady from my class. There was another lady that uh, wasn't actually part of my class, but she was in oh. one of the uh, classes that I went to that was uh, that was uh, led by Ron Collins. Oh, okay. That's and, how you knew her. I thought yeah. she was in your class. No. Um, she's actually a seamstress and she's a um, a costume designer. Oh. So um, she uh, she helped out with one of the other ladies trying to fit a garment. So, and, and um, then there was a young guy came in. He's a drag queen, and he was working on a sequin gown. Um, seemed to know what he was doing. That's for sure. Yeah, he had artificial boobs and artificial bum inserts too. Yes, and we got to see just maybe a little bit too much of that. But so not your average so day, if you know what I mean. It was, well, the last time it's been, it was better than the last. The last time there was a guy. The last time I went, there was a guy there with his mother's old sewing machine, and he didn't know how to use it, and so everybody was trying to help him use it, and uh, he had to hem the bottom of some curtains. No. Oh. And uh, uh, then there was another guy that came in that was sewing uh, restraints for <laughs> sewing restraints, Hang and on. he was altering a straight jacket to uh, fit him. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. If you make your own straight jacket, how do you get into it and then get out of it? <laughs> I don't know. So you have I don't to know. have very it's trusting not, friends. It's not my, know. not my, not your cup, cup of tea. Of tea. <laughs> but it made for an interesting day that's oh, for sure. sure it is and there's something you don't learn about every day either how to create a straight jacket really there might no be no he it wasn't making it it was actually he had a straight jacket he was he, he's just a large man oh and he, he was, was altering it he was altering it so he would fit into it okay well we'll just speculate on that no more so anyways yep so it was an interesting day as you can tell all right, so today we're going to talk about the things that we kind of watch or listen to while we sew or when we want to get ideas or inspiration. Now, every week on The Idiot Quilter, I always feature a usually a quilting, sometimes a sewing um, YouTube channel that I have found and talk a little bit about it. But I have some that I go to on a regular basis, and Walter has some things that he goes to on a regular basis. So we thought we'd do a kind of a quickie review of what these are about. Now, some of them you may have heard of before, some of them maybe you have not. So yeah, so I'm going to start with one. And what I want to get up here on the screen, give me a second here, get things done. Okay, so I listen to a bunch of different uh, podcasts. Just getting this one to come up here. uh different podcasts while i'm usually sewing it's sort of like stuff that's in the background and there is one called quilt and tell and i'll just show you the and the links for everything we talk about today will be down in the show notes uh later on but this is quilt and tell tell now they have a website as well but you can pick this podcast up on google podcasts or on apple podcasts stitcher spotify whatever you listen to if you listen to podcasts what i like about this podcast is there's usually uh three ladies sometimes a fourth one Lori tracy and ginger and uh, they talk about a variety of different topics and i've learned a lot of things about you know techniques or about upcoming events or things like that um so you can see here they on the website they'll often list their different uh ones like they have uh jenny doan they did an interview with jenny doan they don't do a lot of interviews but they um sometimes do and they feature products things like that 
they're actually affiliated with a um site uh that's called quiltingdaily.com and i think quilting daily also produces one of the more popular quilting magazines and i'm not sure what the name of it is i don't think it's called quilting daily uh with that but it's a good one to listen to because i get a lot of ideas and i've been listening to them for several years actually i found them when i first started getting into quilting um so i quite like it and it comes on once a week and i think they usually drop their podcast uh on uh, mondays i think that's when it's, it's usually up on mondays so another one that's related to that is let me just click on the link it's called the quilting arts podcast now this one has different hosts and they look at contemporary art quilting. So this is more, if you're into art quilting, uh, this one might be more to your liking. And they talk about um, what's going on, what the, you know, who the big names are in art quilts and things like that. Uh, their show doesn't come on as regularly, I've noticed lately. They used to come on every week, um, but now it seems to be kind of hit and miss um they are affiliated though with something called quilting arts tv and it is a subscription website and in order to watch their episodes you need to pay money for it and i already belong to the quilt show uh one that's very much similar to that so i looked into joining this one it's not that expensive i forget was it american dollars um I think it was something like $39.99 for a year. And you can also get their back episodes. You can buy DVD sets that have their back episodes on things. Um, I don't know. DVD seems like so last century uh, anymore to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm not interested in buying DVDs. But maybe you would be uh, with it. But there's an option there. Okay, so that's two for me. Now, let's skip down to ones that Walter's got. I have more. Uh, I just have to find the links. Well, see, I don't really listen to podcasts. I just, uh, whenever I need some help, I'll look for uh, uh, sites that have things on. Now, th this lady... This is a YouTube channel. Yeah, right? it's a YouTube channel. And this lady um, has very simple sewing projects right so um and a lot of it's geared you know to women and that when i we needed to make those hoop skirts for uh, oh yeah when we were doing our uh, doing uh, for, uh last year yeah um i ended up using her her videos um like there's lots of videos of making uh hoop skirts but she laid it out in a very simple way and uh and i used her as that and i've used her for uh, other things to look at uh, some sewing techniques and stuff like that so she i liked her uh, videos for she stuff. seems to have a good variety of stuff so yeah. a robe reversible bag ultimate quilt video um circle skirt beach towel looks like it's very much geared to women's garments yeah it is but uh oh there's something how to make, make a, a neck tie. Tie. um i didn't really look at that one yet but uh she has a lot of very simple projects that people can make. Oh, well, here's one cool things to make from a tin can. Yeah. So um, she's got a lot of stuff. Yeah. She's got a lot, a lot of crafty things on here as well. How to make a changing pad. Well, that might be good for the guy that was into restraints. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he might like one of those too. Might be to his favor. And then uh, you had uh, another one here. Uh, was that Abbas Dan? Abbas, Abbas? Yeah, I, if you're having problems with the I have looked at her a few times because she has a lot of stuff on uh sewing uh, using overlockers hmm. and uh how you know problems with overlockers and skip stitches and things like that. And they're good, she's good for uh looking up that sort of information. Okay, this one caught my eye. Nine hems. I thought there's only one kind of hem. I'm well, sure I'm not sure, but nine yeah. hems. I mean, there's more than one type of hem. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are. Skip stitches. How to fix the timing on a sewing machine. Yeah. Oh, 
Did you ever look at that one? No, I, I just, I use these as on an as needed basis type of thing. They're ones I subscribe to. And she does seem to have a lot of things though about sergers yeah. on here too, which if so, you've got an overlock machine or serger, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, this might be good for people to check out because sergers really do um, scare people. Yeah. I don't know why they're not that scary once you've used one, but you know, if you're thinking of getting a serger or something, this might be a place to start to take a look at what they have okay so another one that of mine for my list let's go up here again this is back to podcasts quilter on fire she is a uh canadian she calls herself the quilter on fire because she used to be a firefighter and she has a, a weekly episode um her podcast is she interviews people and a lot of them are people that, well, not a lot, they're all people that people have either heard of or they're award-winning quilters. They're bigger names that she interviews. In fact, that's my one criticism of her. She advertises, or she used to, I think she changed her opening, and maybe that was because of an email I sent her. She said she interviewed uh, famous quilters and also everyday quilters. And I said, well, I haven't heard of, of anybody that's on your list that is an everyday quilter. These are all people that are in the industry um, or people who have won awards or big names or designers, you know, that kind of stuff. And she said, oh, no, she does that, too. But uh, that was the only answer I got from her. Um, she is heavily uh, sponsored. As you can see, uh, Northcott's one of her main sponsors. She has other ones as well. She does run. They're not. Um, they're not bad. She does do um, advertising, and I think basically that's how she uh, affords to put this podcast up, which is fine. They're not uh, intrusive or anything. Uh, but she does get some really big names uh, on here, and it's interesting to listen to. Um, I find her a little arrogant, but that could be just me on that. And another podcast that uh, I listen to is the American uh, Patchwork and Quilting, and they're affiliated with a website called All People Quilt. I think they are. Um, yeah, All People Quilt. Uh, the All People Quilt, just as an aside, website, which is allpeoplequilt.com, is a great resource. There are tons of free patterns on there, and there's other patterns that you can buy as well. There's lots of videos and tips and tricks on things. It's a, it's a pretty good website, so if you've never checked it out, uh, you might want to. But I always find their uh, podcast very, very um, informative. And I think the hosts of this... Do they even talk about the host sign here? I think there's some overlap with the first one that I talked about, which was the um, Quilting Daily. I think they may have the same hosts or one of the same hosts on there. I could be wrong about that, but I think they do. Um, but again, it's a, it's a great thing to listen to when you're working in your um, sewing room. You know, I find it company, you know, kind of a thing. It's like, they're kind of there and I've learned a lot of things from them so let's pop over to one on Walter's list now this lady the last I have page. viewed her a lot of her channels she's one of the main ones I like going to and she has a bit of a strange accent but that's because she's I think she's from South Africa and she may Oh, well, maybe she's got and, and uh, but uh, but she is very, very knowledgeable. And she uh, the one reason I started going to this uh, to her channel is because she has a lot of tips on cover stitch machines. Mm. And I have a cover stitch machine. Now, a cover she, stitch machine is different from a serger, right? Yes. What's the basic difference? Um, it's it ha it's in some ways it looks similar to a serger, or you can get sergers that convert to cover stitch machines, and uh, it has a lower looper, but no upper looper, right? Mm -hmm. A serger has a lower looper, upper looper, and two needles, and uh, on a cover stitch machine, you only have a lower looper. And you can have either two needles or three needles 
on the machine. Uh, mine has two needles. Mine's a lower end model. And what ends up happening is you'll have either two or three rows of stitches on the top. And underneath you'll have a, 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 a like a, it's hard to describe. It's a, uh, um, it looks like a surged edge, but underneath it's mm -hmm. not uh, on the edge. And it, it it's on a lot of um, clothing that you buy. You if you buy, if you look at the clothing that you buy, and what it's good for is it's good for if you're if you're uh, hemming on stretchy material, because it'll stretch. Your sewing stitches will stretch. Mm. You get a similar effect if you use uh, two needles on a domestic machine. You'll get a similar effect, but a cover stitch machine is much uh, does a much better job. Okay, so, so if you're interested in a cover stitch machine, this might be the site to go to for that. But she also has a lot of uh, good tips on like pattern making, on putting in zippers, on uh, doing different seams and everything else. It's not just cover stitch machines. So it really is a good overall um, site to go on. And then actually, it's, it's really my go-to site when I look at stuff. Okay, so another one of mine. Now, those were my uh, podcasts that I listen to, but also in the background, I'll often have on um, the goods, the standards. And everybody knows Missouri uh, Star Quilt Company. Um, and if you don't, where you been if you're into quilting? Because that's one of the ones most people get on to first when they start quilting and uh they're they're constantly doing things that change uh jenny does uh once a week i think on fridays a tutorial a quick tutorial on a quilt that she has designed um but she also does something called triple play with her daughter-in-law and her daughter um where they take uh, a similar design but do it three different ways to show you you know, you can make a table runner, you can make a quilt, something like that. Um, the only thing I criticize them for is that it's a free pattern. You can download it, but it's one page. And it essentially, it doesn't tell you how to put the quilt together. It just tells you what you need for it and what the blocks look like. You have to watch the, Jenny's tutorial in order to figure out how to do it. Um, and that I don't really like, but... If you're a visual learner, then that might be okay. And Jordan Fabrics. Now, Jordan Fabrics, Donna Jordan uh, produces her own patterns, and they're always free. She always has a, um, put it up here. She always has a tutorial to go along with it. And um, her tutorials are all done. The longest any one of her tutorials might be, might be 30 minutes, if it's that. Most of them run around 20 minutes, maybe even a little bit less. It's quick to the point um, and very easy to follow. Very easy to follow. And any patterns I've ever done with Donna Jordan, with the exceptional one, and that was my fault, I've always had great success with. And as I said, they're free. And she has literally hundreds of freebie patterns that she has designed. So if you've never checked out Jordan Fabrics, uh, their website's jordanfabrics.com, I think, and then of course their YouTube channel, uh, you might want to check it. They even have a contest every time they put up a new video, you can win one of the quilts that they've done it. And they say they ship anywhere in the world. I always enter it, never have won one yet. So I have to think they have a subscriber base that's absolute. well, yeah, uh, 605, thousand subscribers so maybe my odds aren't so good in winning one of those so both missouri star quilt and jordan fabrics are great especially if you're somebody just starting out and another one that i really like it's more of a chatty kind of thing uh is let me get there where is it here quilt roadies now she does a lot of things she does embroidery hand embroidery cross stitching uh quilting as well in fact she has two channels she has one called quilt roadies which where she primarily focuses on quilting and she also has uh, i think the other one's called quilt you know um floss roadies or something like that which is a 
uh, floss tube. I guess there's a whole thing out there for people who do embroidery, hand embroidery, and they call them floss tubes uh, kind of a thing. Well, she's involved with that as well. But um, it, it's kind of nice listening to her when you're sewing because it's kind of like you're having like lunch or coffee with somebody. She's very... Um, uh, she doesn't do a lot of tutorials. She just talks about things that she's purchased, things she may be working on, uh, things that have happened that are related to quilting and stuff like that. Um, they also travel around. They have a picture of it. They have this van-like th uh, camper, I guess. And they do like to go to different spots and uh, hang out in this van. Um, and she takes her sewing machine with her, too and works on things as well now she hasn't had a lot of videos in the past year of this because recently they moved and i think with covid and that a lot of places they want like to go to are not available or weren't available so that may pick up again because i know it's something i really like to do because she talks about it quite a bit so that's quilt roadies another one from walter's list different scenes yeah, well, I, I, I sometimes hair. forget how uh, sort of like French, how do you do a French seam or a flat belt seam or something like that. And so I'll go to her site and look up. She does some very good uh, demonstrations of how each of the seams are done. So and her name is what? Tony Barcy. Barcy. Stitch in pink. She yeah. certainly does love to do her hair in fun yeah. colors. And so what? How to sew? So French. So you go to her if you want to learn about different scenes. So well, got her learn. and some of the other ones. Uh, they're you know it's good to uh, to uh, you know if you forget how to do something, you can uh, go back and uh, say, oh yeah, okay, I remember how to do that now. She's got stuff on sergers as well. Yeah, and uh, you have a lot of videos. Oh yeah, she's got quite a few invisible yeah. zipper installation. Yeah. Walking, walking presser foot. She doesn't walking. have a ton, but she uh, has enough. Hmm. Well, so that's an, another potential one. And another one from Walter. Now, this is a company I've purchased products from. Um, I purchased uh, patterns from. And she has now started uh, some complaints about her patterns or sometimes they're not uh, as detailed as you would like them to be. So they're not uh, newbie friendly. Yeah. Well, no, sometimes like if you um, she may have some things in her patterns where she you're following the pattern and then she sort of leaves it up to you to how to finish the uh, put the buttons on type of thing. Right. So. Uh, um she has started to add uh, tutorials for each of her patterns. So uh, that does help. She has a lot of stuff for men. Yeah, she tends to have a lot of... Oh, she has a lot of women's clothes, but she also has a lot of men's clothes. How to sew boxers. Yeah. Yeah, why? <laughs> well, some people like that. Uh, Sometimes yes. people are a little oversized. Oh, yeah, well, maybe like a little silky fill. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... Um, Different people like different things. So now I know that Adam Sows likes her patterns because he's done uh, several of her shirts. He's talked about it before. And if you don't know who Adam Sows is, look him up. He's another great one to. And check she out. sells her patterns on uh, um, uh, on online, and they're PDF patterns, and you print them out and stick them all mm. together. And uh, and uh, so it's it's nice to. Uh, to uh so if she's in europe what are her prices like in um i'm not sure i can't remember the range between uh 10 and 20 dollars canadian for oh. prices i mean they're not well, that's not bad the the prices aren't terrible for and you can buy them in euro dollars or you can buy them in us dollars or you can buy them in canadian dollars so hmm. okay well it's not too bad so uh some other ones that i have um okay this one i mentioned a moment ago this is called the quilt show now the quilt show is with ricky timms and alex anderson and they're both big names in the quilting world but this is a paid site um in order their videos do come up on youtube but they have little short ones that are basically teasers 
uh, every two, every other week they have a guest on their show and it's like a regular television show. They're in a studio, they have different segments, the whole bit. It's very, very professionally done. I joined it. Uh, the membership is $49.99 American a year. So it's about 60 bucks Canadian. Um, but you want to know something? I don't regret spending that money. I just renewed back in May for another year. They have classes, they have projects. Those are all free if you're a member. If you're not a member, you really can't watch their shows, in the entirety of them. They do have a store as well where they sell various products. They are the people behind, or Alex Anderson, I believe, and her husband are behind the brand Quilter Select, which um, they've got some really great products. Uh, the rulers, thread, things like that are very good quality. The only reason I don't own any of their stuff is because I'd have to order it through the States. I can't get it up here. Although um, there may be, there are some stores that are starting to sell more of the Quilter Select products, like our local um, quilting store here, Ultimate Sewing, sells their thread. Um, but I don't, I don't sure if they sell any of their rulers. I don't think so. Um, but it is, it is worth the investment to, to join them. Um, you can see some of their stuff. They have a seven day free trial. And so that gets you into everything. And they're very good in terms of, you know, they, they don't press you. If you want to, um, cancel it after one week, it's not a problem. So yeah, I highly recommend it. It, it is very much worth the, the money. And that's not a lot of money when you consider what a magazine subscription would cost you. Uh, or at least for us here in Canada, if we were to order one of the quilting magazines from the States uh, with it. So it's not a bad uh, deal. Um, now, just a couple of mentions. Uh, power tools with thread. Um, this is one she's been around for a long time. Most people know about her. If you're into a machine embroidery, um she's a good one to check out for that the only criticism i have of her is that she's very brand specific she uses brother so if you have brother no problem she also when she's doing machine embroidery most of the time goes to her industrial machine which is like a seven needle or a ten needle machine um i also think sometimes she makes machine embroidery more complex than it needs to be um but it's very interesting she shows you patterns she uh talks about various products from uh designs by juju for example is one that i heard about from her and that's where i bought quite a few designs by juju for my embroidery machine and i like them they're they're very well written uh very clear instructions um she also uh spot or is not sponsored by but she also supports the hoop sisters uh, the Hoop Sisters, I have never done any of their designs. They look fairly complex. They look really, like, good. But they're also very expensive uh, as well. And usually they're, like, for entire quilts. Like, here in this second video little picture, you can see one of their designs right there. That's all done in the hoop embroidery. But if you're into in the hoop embroidery, you might want to check this out. Um... Two I'm going to mention, I've interviewed these people. Now, these are more down to earth. They're not big names, although they are very much worth seeing or checking out. Quilting with Stephanie Stitches. Uh, she's great. Check out the interview I did with her on the Idiot Quilter uh, part of my YouTube channel. Um, really nice person. Um, I'm doing one of her quilts designs as well. And another one, too, that maybe some people don't know about, but should. He's growing as time goes on. This is the guy who sews. Um, he has a great uh, video, several videos every week. He does a live um, with, with another quilter every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. That goes for about an hour. Um, it's, you know, you can chat there. There's quite a, a regular group of people who check this out um as well and uh, i've interviewed him too and we're doing a couple of co collabs together as well so don't don't just go looking for the big names look for some of the average people too because you'll learn a lot 
Um, you've heard me talk a bit about Kim Jamison Hurst with Chatterbox Quilts. She also runs a paid membership site called The Quilter's Way. I've belonged to it since she started it a few years ago, and uh, it's pretty good. You can get a free membership on that for a week to try it out. She has tons on that particular website, not the YouTube channel. She has all kinds of very detailed uh, multi-part tutorials uh, to teach you everything from free motion quilting to different types of quilting designs and things like that. But she does a regular YouTube uh, channel as well with lots of very helpful hints. She primarily focuses on machine domestic machine quilting. Um, that's her, one of her favorite things, but she has other things as well uh, that she offers. Um, and this one, the Sewing Room Channel, she's been on for a long time. Uh, she talks again about, you know, what she buys at places like the Dollar Tree, um, basically quilting on a budget. Um, she has lots of neat little ideas uh, for making gifts and things like that, especially this time of the year around Christmas time. Um, but she's been there for a long time and she does both quilting, bag making, sewing, uh, you know, aprons, clothing, things like that as well. Um, I always find her hauls really interesting because she gets the ugliest fabric I have ever seen. She can find it, but she does things with it. Okay. Then, you know, I say it's ugly. To me, it's ugly. And it comes from Walmart. Okay, yeah, I have a bias. I won't buy fabric at Walmart. But now then, mind you, our Walmarts won't, don't really sell, sell fabric. fabric so. And I know in the States it does. But in her favor, she does do things with it. And she says she only really has two places close enough to her that she can get fabric. And that's one's Walmart. The other one's Joanne's. So that's not a criticism of her uh, at all. Um but she's been around for a long time. She knows what she's doing. So you might want to check that out. And that's pretty much it. There was another one here, but that has nothing to do with uh, quilting. And I'm not even going to talk about it because of it. And did we get all of oh, yours? So very easy. Oh, yeah, of course. I forgot this one because it's a fellow Canadian. And you may have seen Laura Coy's, Coy's um, YouTube channel before. So very easy very easy very easy so very easy uh she is uh, a seamstress she is a quilter she knows what she's doing she has very professional uh videos um she also she's written a couple of books as well i actually i own both of her books um her instructions are very clear um but she also talks about new products um tips and tricks everything very much one if you're going to pick some youtube channels that you need in your repertoire of ones to go to regularly this would be definitely one of them uh as well and you can see her popularity 433,000 subscribers so she knows what she's doing okay so that is just scratching the surface i'm constantly watching there's others that i watch too on a regular basis um, I'm always looking for new ones. Uh, you, you are a regular subscriber to the Idiot Quilter. You know that I review ones every week that I have found. Um, there's a wealth of information out there. Uh, so if you are just getting into sewing or quilting, YouTube's your best source and podcasts are great too. So check them out. So any that you can think of that you didn't think of that you want to think people should know about? Well, you don't watch as many as I do. No, but and when I, I mean, say watch, you, I don't really sit did down. Did you uh, mention what? Adam Sows or? Well, yeah, I mentioned that Adam Sows in the context yeah. of that. But yes, Adam Sows for sure uh, is another one to check out, especially if you're into bag making. And um, he also shows uh, to make those um, um, dolls or whatever. That oh yeah, his art dolls. Yeah. I call them all art dolls. Yeah, he he's a very very talented uh, sewist. Um, as well so yeah definitely for sure check him out and easy enough to find him in you on youtube just put in adam sows s-e-w-s and you'll find him he, and he was if you'd been at my retreat the last retreat i had 
Adam was one of my guest speakers. And I have what he talked about, which involved both his bags and his dolls that he makes. Uh, go back, find it. Um, I don't have a link for it down here, but you can find it in the Idiot Quilter Presents sections. Um, and you'll meet Adam. Mm -hmm. He gave a really great um, talk during the retreat. So like I said, there are hundreds, literally hundreds, if not thousands out there. So it can really boggle your mind. But those are ones, if you want to get started into viewing these or into podcasts, uh, those these are ones that I think are a great starting point anyways um, with them. And ones that Walter mentioned too for sewing. Okay, so I think that's it for us today. And yeah, so hope you have a good week. Christmas is coming quicker than we thought. So I hope you're getting your Christmas sewing up to date. I've been working on it since August. I am so sick of Christmas projects. So anyways, we'll see you next week. Say goodbye, Walter. Goodbye, Walter. Bye, everybody. Bye.